Hello, DeMatha Nation. Welcome to today's DeMatha Zoom Hour with special guest, DeMatha legend, Joe Carroll. My name is Connor Gowacki, current staff member here at DeMatha, and I'm joined today by fellow staff member, Ben Flary, class of 2011, principal, Dr. Dan McMahon, class of 76, and current editor-in-chief for the Athletic DC, David Aldridge, class of 1983. Both David and Dr. McMahon had Joe Carroll as a teacher here during their time at DeMatha. Joe taught at DeMatha for 50 years, from 1970 to 2020, and has taught almost every English class at every grade and ability level over the years. Joe served as co-chair of the English department, editor of the Stagline newspaper and the yearbook, director of several Surfois seminars, summer seminars, chess club moderator, and the force behind several different literary magazines at one time or another. Joe was born in Silver Spring, and attended St. Bernadette's Catholic School before graduating from Good Counsel in 1962. Joe then graduated from Catholic University of America in 1968 with a degree in English. Joe was inducted into the DeMatha Hall of Fame in 2013, and it's almost impossible to put into words the impact that Joe has had on DeMatha, its faculty and staff, and ultimately every student he has taught or spoken to. I'm sure many, if not all of you on this call, I've had the pleasure of having Joe in class at some time or another. With that being said, it's my pleasure to introduce our guest today and legendary faculty member here at DeMatha, Mr. Joe Carroll. So at this point, take out a sheet of paper, <laughs> the <next> prize, <laughs> and the first question would be, what did Juliet mean by wherefore art thou Romeo? <laughs> or if you want me to rephrase that, wherefore art thou Romeo, Juliet, what she mean? There you go. That's for Tom. <laughs> Tom Bonta. That's well, Joe, as you can see from the laughter on everybody's face, everybody uh, knows that really well. So thanks for okay. hot dog style. <laughs> <laughs> so, so joe what i guess what brought you to the matha in the first place back in 1970 okay um i taught for a year at mount saint joseph okay and i took a year off to study i did graduate courses at maryland university and maryland university uh, shut down uh, because of, I guess, protests in uh, the spring. So I was looking around for something to do. So I, basically, I just sent a letter of application out to everybody. And uh, I knew what I did. I, I knew Rocco Manila because he was a friend of my brother's. And so John Moylan called me in. And he my interview with him is pretty good. And he said... Uh, First of all, he said, we can't have another Rocco Manila. Okay, <laughs> he said first. And the other thing he asked me was whether I could drive a bus. And that was kind of like my introduction um, to DeMath. And I tell you the truth, I, I, I didn't know much about DeMath beforehand. I had come over during high school, I came over for some type of religious conference, but uh, I had, DeMath wasn't big on my radar before that. That's great, Joe. Now, you uh, obviously taught at DeMatha for, for 50 years. Um, so my next question is sort of a two-part question, but um, Anna, what, what made you stay at DeMatha for 50 years? And how does, uh, what does DeMatha, you know, sort of mean to you? And how does it stand out, in your opinion, to, to and compared to other high schools in the country? Okay, uh, first of all, the, the great thing about DeMatha is that John and Dan and anyone else, they let you do what you want in the classroom, as long as you're not throwing anybody out the window. Uh, it was a second, that was <laughs> after race mint. Okay, <laughs> but they let you do what you want. Um, and everybody, um, I think it's the acceptance. It's the brotherhood. Uh, I mean, uh, the faculty is just like, everybody is so accepting and the kids are 
the greatest in the world. Okay, the kids are the greatest in the world. Uh, even though I've had some guys who were um, <laughs> really had me in dithers, but mm -hmm. the kids were the greatest. I did that. My first few years were kind of rough, um, discipline wise. It was never great at discipline, but uh, that smoothed out. My mentor was um, Buck Offit. As Buck Offit is the one who uh, really showed me the ropes, and uh, he was the most patient person with me that I ever ever knew. And he always hints stuff. He would never tell me what to do. He just he would give a hint. <laughs> Doc, you want to go ahead? Yeah, sure. Uh, I'm I'm just going to tell a, a quick story. So I had Joe Carroll twice at DeMatha as a freshman and a junior, and I was a very bad student, and um, I got bad grades, but that was not Joe's fault. That was that was my fault. So um, when I came back to teach at DeMatha, I was um, obviously a little embarrassed uh, about that, and um, Joe, more than anyone, was incredibly kind to me, and um, never held it against me that uh, I had been a bad uh, a bad student. And he was remarkably helpful to me as I wrote my dissertation, Joe read big parts of it and made uh, huge, um, enormous, uh, helpful suggestions to it. And uh, I've said that I have always wanted to be as ambitious um, a reader as Joe uh, has been. And in fact, yesterday he participated in our uh, faculty book exchange, um, which he has every year that we've we've had that. So, uh, Joe, I do have a couple of uh, questions. Um, so, one is, do, do you have or did you have favorite texts that you uh, that you'd like to return to in whatever way you could, um, uh, whether that uh, fiction or um, drama or um, film or uh, lyric poems or anything else? And did you have favorite lessons or favorite uh, projects that you like to that you like to do um i was thinking about that uh yesterday and today and here's what i thought to myself well uh it's asking that question is like um, asking a kid okay when you're looking at a playground and saying to the kid what is your favorite uh what is your favorite uh, toy on that playground you like sliding board or you like the uh, uh, the jumping jack or what do you like? I, I mean, it's hard really to say, you know, I could go back and say, well, uh, Plato and the Republic, right? I mean, world literature. And uh, I was just engrossed with Plato and the Republic. And I followed that throughout the whole year with other uh, utopias and dystopias, um, um, or um, maybe the Odyssey, and obviously uh, uh, Joseph Campbell's uh, Journey to Hero, and I follow that for years and years. But uh, then I would get onto a Shakespeare text, where I'd get into uh, Mafuz, Mafuz, and um, the uh, 1001 Arabian Nights, or uh, I, hey, I got into Chinese literature, the story of the stone. Uh, so I was all over the place, to tell you the truth. Um, but I think I come back to most of uh, what I do comes back to the journey to hero. And even in a ninth grade with, um, uh, with, um, what is it, the journey story in ninth grade? Uh, Gula Gwyn. Wizard of Earthsea. Wizard of Earthsea. Yeah. Yep. So the fact of the matter is, I remember uh, one year where I had um, four different levels of classes and I four different levels of classes doing different literature, but the outline would be the journey of the hero for everyone. So I was able to apply the journey of the hero to every one of these classes that I was doing. So 
That's where I'm coming from. Thanks, Kevin. I hope I, that's enough for you. That's great. <laughs> hey, Mr. Carroll, um, I have a brief story too. Um, I got there in 1980 as a 10th grader because I transferred in and I had Mr. Carroll for two years, 11th, junior and senior year and really got to know him because he was the advisor to the stag line, which is when I started realizing I like journalism. And he got me and Joe Colella to kind of work on the stag line <laughs> and keep it going sometimes. <laughs> But I remember the first time I went in for a meeting, they had the, you know, they had the list, you know, the list of the editors and the writers and the photographers and everything, the staff box, right? And you go down the staff box and at the end of the staff box, the last name, it said Joe Carroll and it said Avatar. <laughs> and, I, and I said, what is, I don't know, what, what is an Avatar? Was that like a special editor or something? Do they, what is, and the great late John Buck, who was the one who got me involved oh, in the paper the yeah, first yeah. time said, you should look it up. And I looked up Avatar and it and I looked up the definition and it said God-like figure. <laughs> I thought, yeah, that's about right. <laughs> that's about right. That's about right. So here's my question. Um, you had, it was always a two-way street between you and the students over the years, but I was a student. We were all students. So we, our feeling about you is going our way. Um, I wondered how you kind of, came to grips with the fact that that everybody learns differently and at a different level and some people may get it completely and some people may get it just a little bit and some people may not get it at all and you have to kind of make your peace with that i wonder as a teacher how you how you came to grips with that well it, it was a long process it, i mean uh i've had my years of um strict grading i've had my years of loose grading and um, I would say that um, my feeling was that everybody got, you know, what I've been told is that even guys who did not say, quote unquote, pass for the year, uh, they still learn something. OK. And my great, great uh, example of that, and I hate to I hate to bring him out, but. I had this one guy who, uh, at the end of the year, I told him, uh, you know, we have a great reading list for summer. You'll really enjoy this. And he was like, yeah, you think so? And I said, guess what? He's writing right now. He's a newspaper reporter right now. Um, and I've been talking to him over the years, but uh, that's so, that's the kind of thing that, you know, you know, where guys are right now is like, you might have a guy scratching his head right now. And in what, in 10 years, he's a, uh, he's a, uh, a obstetrician or he's a doctor, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it takes a while to catch on to stuff like that. Right. Right. Oh, that's great. That's great. <laughs> well, I appreciate you, Mr. Carroll. I mean, oh. you, I've told people you're the you're the reason I got into journalism. You're the you're the guy that started me on the path. I thought you were. I thought you were, a, you were printing your own little. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't have my own printing press at home. I'm not Gutenberg for goodness. No. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh well, we've had the uh, journalists go on to be. Some fantastic writers. We had a lot of fun too. Yeah, sure Wait, did. was that in the house? Yes, that was in the house. That was the house, the great yeah. house. <laughs> it sure was. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, Joe, that's that's great. And um, as Ben mentioned earlier, we, we now like to open the floor up to questions for anybody in the audience. Ask a question to Mr. Carroll. And as Ben mentioned earlier, we're doing things a little bit different this time. So in the chat on the side, indicate if you can include your name and your year, we'll say that person has a question and then you can unmute your mic and ask your question to Mr. Carroll. Uh, while we're waiting for that, Joe, I wanted to ask you, is there, and this could be kind of a loaded question since you had a, you've been, you were able to be at DeMatha for such a long time. Is there a favorite memory 
either in the classroom or somewhere, something on campus that sticks out to you? Uh, several, several. Uh, and um, Tom Ponton knows about this, the, uh, the time I was given a quiz and um, a God bless her soul, uh, was it Lou Dutton? Uh, kept knocking on the door, knocking on the door, and she kept knocking on the door, and, and I was giving the quiz, and she finally came in and said, um, Mr. Carroll, there's cows in the pumpkin patch, uh, which <laughs> was a message from home. Uh, what I was supposed to do about that, I don't know, um, being I was in class, but um, that's one of my interesting memories. Um there was a time when I had, um, I had for six months, I had, um, I had a little bit of um, dizziness, uh, vertigo. And I came into class one day. And you know how vertigo works? You're walking down an aisle and all of a sudden, bang, you're just dizzy, right? Now, this is the inner ear infection. So, um, one day I walked into class and it hit me, vertigo. And I sat down in my chair, I pointed to a student. I said, put the film in the, the video. Um, and then I kept my head as still as anything. And we held a whole class and nobody really realized that I had vertigo. There's a weird thing. It looks like we got a question here from Michael Coleman. Uh, so Mike, if you can unmute your mic and then you can ask your question to Joe Carroll. Yeah, thanks. Hi, Joe, uh, Michael Coleman, class of 88. Um, so I, I saw in the chat how um, you helped get the uh, stag line restarted in the 70s. Um, in uh, 87, 88, um, I, something I learned from you, Joe, was um, going into my senior year, I wanted to take a creative writing class and there wasn't one. So uh, junior year, I asked you about that and you said, well, let's make it happen. And there was a writing class. Uh, then right when that started, I asked, I think it would be cool if we had a literary magazine and you're like, let's, let's go, let's make it happen. I learned from you, um, ask, <laughs> you know? um to ask if you can make something happen and um there's there's no reason not to ask the worst thing that happens is no and the best is you got something to hold on to for a lifetime um uh, and i really appreciate that um my question for you is i know you do a lot of reading um do you do a lot of writing uh and ever publish uh i've done writing in my head and I have not published. That is something that uh, definitely is in the works for the future. But um, it's it, it's nothing written down. I yeah, I dabbled years ago. I dabbled years ago, and I did not publish. And um, you never can tell what, with all this free time, something might happen. And I remember uh, that magazine and. Um, like where we discussed, what we discussed, the muse, that the muse was real. <laughs> right. Right. I, by the way, I, you're, I've read your wife's book. That's a neat book, too. And the, I uh, uh, hope to get to that Poe Museum, too. I hope so. Let's see you yeah. there. All but right. yeah, that, the night, was this the Night Stalker? Night Walker. Night Walker. Yeah. Yeah. Very, very scary stuff. Cool. cool. And then um, also, is there, uh, what else are you reading? Is there anything that uh, you're excited about that you've read? That's I'm reading, uh, right now, I'm reading classics. Okay. Uh, I'm going to, I've, I've just order, ordered the Song of Achilles by Ann Miller. Uh, I've got uh, Dr. Shivago open. I've got Cervantes open. Uh, I've got about four or five books that I'm, I'm reading back and forth. Uh, if I get into one, I'll read it for a little while, then set it down, read something else. But I'm going back to old classics now since I have the time. 
Great, Joe. Um, so before I get into the next question, I think uh, well, Todd Sanzone had had a similar question about what you're currently reading, but we, we answered that. Um, real quick, uh, Ted Jeffries just kind of had a comment, uh, and this is from uh, Tim Breen, circa 1987. He says, uh, it's been said that there have been three great JCs uh, in the history of the world. Uh, he says, Jesus Christ, Julius Caesar, and Joe Carroll are the three are the three great JCs. Um, so uh, uh, Ted, is, Ted is one I, of the great TJs. <laughs> I, I wanted to ask you, Joe. This, I've heard about this uh, story, but I heard that you had a, a Chesapeake Bay swim. Uh, just kind of wanted to, to ask about that and how that went. Um, I, I, uh, I did pretty well. I got uh, let me see, two hours and fifteen minutes. About. Let's see, about halfway through the, the through the group, I did it a couple of times. Uh, that was in my athletic days. I practiced for a while. I'd, I'd swim for a couple miles every day, uh, and uh, and they let us go. Uh, like hundred people jumped in at once, uh, and you had to swim between the bridges. Okay, and um, uh, of course the super duper guy at the front did it in 25 minutes but uh two hours and 15 minutes i felt pretty good about myself that's like two miles an hour but you know you get the waves in one way to help you out a little bit Joe, and, yeah, that was my super athletic days <laughs> Joe, i actually uh, i actually uh was into long uh ocean swimming for a while I went up to the Chop Tank River and swam that. And then um, I was uh, down at um, Outer Banks and uh, swam the coast for like three or four miles, uh, keeping my eye on out for sharks, of course. <laughs> Joe, it looks like we got a question from Nick Lenardi. So Nick, oh. uh, free to unmute your mic and ask Joe a question. Hey, Mr. Carroll. Uh, so I, uh, class of 2008, um, I, I know you obviously been being at DeMatha for as long as you were, you taught a lot of current faculty and staff. And I'm just wondering if you have any funny or interesting memories or stories or anything about uh, any of your old students who are now teachers. Let me think. They're all good memories, all good memories. Um, Mike Tomey was Mike Tomey was always a, a hit for me, right? He has some good memories because um, he came up to me one day and said, uh, "I think I want to be a teacher." And I is I said, "Are you sure about that?" But <laughs> then he turned out being really a great teacher. So, uh, uh, yeah, uh, they've all gone on to do great stuff. Um, you know, Dan McMahon has uh, given me more uh, info and reads and hints than just about any student I have ever uh, had. And um, I read, oh, oh, Joe Raymond. Joe Raymond. Okay, let me mention Joe Raymond. Um, because uh, we get together in the faculty lounge, we used to, right? And this is uh, years after I have him. And we always talk about how he never got more than a B plus on his compositions. And he always wondered if maybe somewhere at home, I had some old compositions of him and maybe I could uh, re, uh, he was in honors, right? But, it, but he, he was saying, maybe I just looked the name Joe Raymond and wrote down B, right? <laughs> Rather than read it. But we have a running joke about that. Is that enough? Thanks, Mr. Carroll. Good. To, yeah, no, that's great. Good to see you. <laughs> you look good. <laughs> Thank you. You too. <laughs> hey, uh, Dave, you want to go next? Yeah, sure. I just, um, how'd you come up with the pop quiz? Because it was just <laughs> the bane of so many of our existence. 
<laughs> How did that come up? How did you say, I'm going to use this relentlessly? <laughs> well, probably uh, from uh, Buck Offit, who did the same thing. And then um, he came up to me and he, he said one day, he said, Joe, you, I hope you're not giving, for people who don't take quizzes or miss the day, you're not giving them a zero, are you? And so um, Buck Offit is the one who kind of uh, mentored me in that. But um, I would have the questions all in my mind ahead of time, right? Um, um, so, I, I mean, I had it down ahead of time, the, the pop quiz. Um, I think um, in gradually, in terms of um, correcting it, it, the idea of uh, students asking questions afterwards, uh, should it be a V here or an A here? Or was this correct or is that correct? That kind of drove me nuts after a while. <laughs> but always a bonus question, you know? Yep, that's right. That's there right. you go. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Thanks, Joe. Uh, Dr. McMahon. So, uh, Joe, um, uh, can you talk a little bit about some of the, the, uh, the people who um, who you worked with, uh, I, you've mentioned Buck, and I mean, uh, for many of us here, he was uh, transcendentally great, right? Yeah. He was, but um, you worked with lots of really uh, interesting and, and good teachers. Can you tell us a couple of stories about uh, people that either you intersected with in the faculty lounge or uh, you got a chance to uh, uh, to watch them uh, a little bit? And um, Well, I'll tell, you what. I'll tell you what. Um, and this is um, my my belief is that um, what you have now with uh, Sam Holler and John McConnell, like and um, and Paul Clark, basically they've they've transformed. I hate to say the English department is the best department out there, but um, they basically have uh, brought their A game, really. Okay, and. Um, Brendan Shea, who introduced the, uh, the house system. Uh, no one gives him credit for introducing the house system, but and that was back in 10th grade, right? <laughs> um, yeah, um, every teacher who walked in, who was part of my class, um, and uh, Rich Machesky, uh, um, Mary Yerish, Pat Karen, I mean, all of them. It's just like, they raised the bar. They raised the bar. And when I was a, when I was a youngster teacher, uh, I was used to be amazed at how um, Buck would, uh, Buck would always wander over into Morgan's homeroom in the morning. And they would have a little, little conversation, which was kind of like a, above everybody's all the freshmen's head sort of like um but yeah yeah they were all great models to tell you the truth uh reeves impressed with him and um everybody joe we got a question from ted jeffries uh ted feel free to unmute your mic joe carroll ted jeffries class of 1988 You've accomplished so much at DeMatha during your time there, 50 years. Um, is there something that you can point to that you feel, maybe, maybe not a sense of regret, but wish that you were able to do that you were not not able to accomplish during your time? Live longer? <laughs> yeah, Ted. Uh, uh, it, the, this retirement thing is, is strange. It's like, you know, um, DeMath is a big part of my existence, right? Uh, walking away from it, I feel like, whoa, there's uh, like a, I'm, I'm magnetized, I'm cemented back there, okay? Um, nope, uh, 
is there something that I didn't accomplish? Well, probably a lot of things I didn't accomplish. Um, but uh, being there was great. And having fantastic kids uh, as students. Thank you, Joe. Uh, next question from uh, John Kitchens. Uh, John, if you want to unmute your mic, John Kitchens. Uh, yes, thank you. Good afternoon, Stags and Mr. Carroll, John Kitchens, the hallowed class of 1978. Um, I just have a general question. Let me give you a cream puff one, Joe. Uh, how has the school evolved in 50 years of your time there in terms of student body growth, evolution, uh, 50 years as a lifetime. The last time I spoke with you, you had explained that the students were more digital as compared to uh, the 70s. So just from a historical perspective, standing back like father time, give us a view of what it what has looked like over 50 years from day one to the day that you retired. Thank you. Well, yeah, I think it's a, it's a matter of uh, teenagers will always be teenagers uh, 50 years ago and today, okay? So there will always be teenagers. The books may change, the digital stuff may change, but, um, but they'll, the, what they are, what, what a teenager is and what a student is in class is kind of always the same. I mean, the person doesn't change, but the, if you want the the technic technic changes, that's what I think. Um, um, I think we have, I think we're like, we've always been good natured, right? Um, students have always, let me see, seen the better side of things. Um, and I think they still do. I'm really impressed. Hey, Joe, can I follow up on that real, yeah. real quickly? The, um, when I first started teaching and I wanted to show a movie, I had to write away to a company which sent it in a cardboard box and it came with a splice kit and had to be mounted. I mean, it was right. cost a lot of money. It was super expensive. It's like 150 bucks to run a movie and I'd try and work with other people in the department so we could all show it on one day and then mail it back. I mean, it was a colossal pain, but um, you were one of the first people to really adopt digital texts. Like uh, when you would work with Frankenstein, you'd also show lots of uh, things. Can you talk a little bit about, I mean, I think one of the things I admire is the way you kept thinking about what, what counts as a text. I mean, what, what does this mean? Can you talk a little bit about sort of the well, notion of that, including taking kids to plays? Uh, uh, yeah, in the early days, um, I would go over to Prince George County Library and borrow stuff, borrow their movies, and we had the 16 millimeter projectors, and then I would uh, do the 16 millimeter projector uh, along with something that we were doing in class. Okay. Um, I got to the point where I was, um, kids would ask me for extra credit and I would um, send them out to plays. And then we did a, we did a number of uh, Shakespeare, um, Shakespeare plays. And um, um, that was a lot of fun too. Um, but um, I know one kid said, he sent me out to a play and uh, I looked at the neighborhood and said, what's he doing? <laughs> what am I doing in this neighborhood? Right. <laughs> but um, um, let me see. Tom Ponton always brings up that uh, uh, when we were doing um, Bob D Dylan Thomas's uh, uh, Beggar in the Park or something like that, that I would bring uh, uh, in Aqualung and play Aqualung for him. Um, and I think Buck off it was Buck was doing the same thing with uh, um, his uh, knights in white satin. Joe, we got a question here from Todd Sanzone. Todd, you want to unmute your mic and ask Joe your question. 
Thanks, Connor. Mr. C, it's good to see you, sir. Hey, good to see you. Thank you. Uh, yes, I had a question leading into modern reading and somebody kind of hit, hit on that already. I just want to say, firstly, that, um, you know, I said to my wife recently in, in a different context and, you know, something we were talking about that I, it just came to mind that if I have to look back at teachers I've had in my lifetime, all my favorites have been English teachers. I don't know if that says more about me than about them, but it's true, whatever. Maybe it says something about everybody involved, but uh, you are tops among, you know, among the others and, and, and Doc McMahon is on that list as well. Uh, so thank you both. And you know, there's really three people that I could really point to in my life that have uh, built a love for books and reading in me. And that is my mom first, and then the two of you. So thank you for that. Um, my question is being that, you know, again, you're one of my favorite teachers and have been forever. Uh, I wonder if, you know, you could speak to, you know, your experience as a, as a student and what it meant to you to have an educator in the room that influenced you and how they, you know, how they influenced you to become the great teacher that you did? That's a great question. Um, and I can point to one or two uh, teachers as uh, I was growing up that really inspired me. And um, uh, the one that really um, turned me in terms of literature, his name was Brother Leonard and it was junior, uh, junior college. And um, um, he's like, yeah, he smoked like a chimney, um, but he was so passionate about the, but about the work that you know, I just, I just went for it. Um, but English, all reading, I've been reading since I was a wee little kid, so it's um, it came second nature to me. And I'm glad you, uh, I mean, nothing I like better than uh, exploring a new text. And my, um, during the years that I would teach, uh, you couldn't do a hundred, like 10 new books in one year. But every year you could do one new book, right? Or a new author, and then gradually work that into your whole system. So, um, I had fun with it. Thanks, Joe. Thanks, Todd, for your question. Uh, Joe, I have a, a question from uh, Michael Coleman. Michael, if you want to unmute your mic. Uh, yeah, so um, I wanted to know uh, what were some of your, what was your uh, favorite class to teach? Or um, maybe if there was like a specialty class you taught that you loved or um, um, any kind of unusual class. Yeah, my, uh, my major was British literature, okay? So that was really where I lean, you know, and, and also the romantic poets, right? And, you know, Buck helped me out with that too, but um, I would go British literature, whether it was honors or regular or 33, was a favorite of mine. And then someone introduced me into world literature and they gave me a high speed class. And then I would, you know, start with the Odyssey and the Plato's Republic, you know, go in that direction. But uh, originally it was uh, uh, British Brit Lit, okay. But, but they moved me up gradually because I, I began teaching uh, ninth grade and then um, a student came up to me and said, Mr. Carroll, um, we're in 11th grade now and um, your ninth grade was a lot harder. So I think you ought to be teaching 11th grade. So that's kind of the time that I switched up into 11th grade. No, this has been great. We're gonna, we're gonna follow us with one last question here and it's, it's a question for you. What you mentioned all the teachers and students that left an impact on you. So I guess if you could pick one thing, what, what was the one thing that, uh, you know, kept you at DeMatha for 50 years? 
the people, I mean, um, the Trinitarians, I don't think Trinitarians really, really been uh, um, forgiven me my sins more than once. <laughs> really, the Trinitarians, I got to give them credit, you know. I mean, the St. John the Math of Day, but uh, they've really been kind of lenient with me. I mean, they probably could have kicked my butt out a long time ago. But, uh, and then um, John Moreland. I mean, John Moreland was really fantastic as a leader um, in terms of letting you do what you wanted to do, right? Buck off it. And then you get to the, uh, the, the newer people run by Dan McMahon and uh, you take another step up. So it's been, the experience has been positive uh, with all the teachers and kids. And, um, you know, even if I walked into class one day and all the, all the desks were turned around backwards, um, <laughs> which happened a couple of times, right? Uh, I knew that was in good fun. Gerald, that, that, stuff like that doesn't good. happen. You know, I mean, nobody's going to get angry at that. Uh, when you come in and you're all your all your whole all your desks are turned in the opposite direction. I mean, <laughs> maybe you shouldn't have taken a break. <laughs> <laughs> Great, Joe. Well, thank you. Um, thank you so much, and and thank you to Dan McMahon and to Dave Aldridge. Um, before I thank you guys. Before I, I give it to Connor Glowacki for the conclusion, uh, as part of my job, obviously in the advancement office, uh, we'd like to ask for your support for the fund for DeMatha that went out in the mail in October. Uh, it's it's part of our, our, our school mission uh, for educating faith-filled gentlemen and scholars. So you can always give online at www.dematha.org. So just wanted to throw my plug in there. And then Connor, if you want to take us for the conclusion. Yeah, Joe, thanks again for joining us. And thank you all for hopping on another DeMatha Zoom hour. Great time, and, and Joe, I hope you know, I think all the uh, the stories and all the lessons have showed the impact that you left at DeMatha. Well, I thank you all for your your great respect. And uh, I love you all, love the whole school, love all the teachers and students. Well, Joe, thanks again. Um, hopefully we can get you back on campus soon. And thanks again for everybody for attending and hope everyone has a Merry Christmas and happy holiday season. Thanks again, everybody. Hey, Merry Christmas. Thank you, Joe. You are the man. Take care. Merry guys. Christmas. Happy New Year to you, buddy. Thank you.